hello everybody welcome back to my channel my name is vivian on this channel i talk about everything nursing lifestyle motherhood beauty and all that good stuff if this is your first time of coming across this channel do well to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you get notification of any new videos i post subsequently and trust me it's free absolutely free and i promise to add value to you on this channel today is a night routine and an introduction to a basic profiling of the wards in the hospital or even can be relatable to a care home but in a different way okay so i'm quite in an excited mood today so i'm dancing Just before I begin to dance, I give myself a good brush usually before I go on my night shaves. On other days, I have to give myself a wash and I head out to work for the day. Okay, prepare myself, put my makeup on. Anyway, today I was excited, so I decided to dance and I'm dancing to some old good music. All right. <laughs> So arriving at the ward, I'm just taking in the layout of the ward like any new person would do. All right, so um, I've gotten into the staff's room where you get cloak to be kept. You have hanging rags for you to keep your jacket, especially because it's cold right now. Okay, so you can put off your jackets here. And there are cabinets for nurses who work in the ward. You have a notice board for encouragement, for newsletters, for educational opportunities for staff and all of that stuff. In some staff rooms, you have fridges, you have cupboards for tea, little things just to keep yourself happy. Usually when you walk into a ward, the first place you want to look out for is nursing station or the reception depending on what it is called over there usually there is always signage everywhere you can never lose your bearing you see be signages like here to help exit nurses station and the rest of it so first you will want to find the nurses station and as you can see there nurses station i'm quite early some people are in the rooms taking care of patients and the layout of the ward usually you have the rooms of the ward or bays bays where you have more than one patient and it can be in layout of rooms and to every room or to every bay you know, there's a pair of gloves of different sizes medium large and small you have wipes sinks to wash your hands and water and in some cases you have sanitizers at the door post or in the bay that is a basic layout of the ward and you have gloves and aprons in those places all right and then you can be shown even the treatment room where you could have your computers syringes needles waters for injection covers for iv medication cd medications a lot of signages standing orders protocols for how to do things Cleaner wipes to clean things and surfaces and wipe places down. Your healthcare waste and normal waste, which are usually open with your feet. They are pita beans, you don't have to touch them. And you have even the sharps bean, okay? And you have your fridge, of course, where you keep all medications that cannot be stored at room temperature. And you have all the labelings to all the cupboards where things are found, TTO packs, which are just take-home drugs, IV medication, and the rest of it. When we go into the world, you're going to find out that everywhere has its own labeling also. You have a treatment room, places for staff only, the kitchen, equipment store for other equipment, or we also call it swim bin in some places, staff room, general board where messages are passed across the people. You have signages as you can see. There are always cues to action. All you have to do is to read, understand, and implement. Basically, so if you're able to read anything, think about it. You understand why it has been done and you implement it. That is one beautiful thing about the hospitals and signages and standard working protocols and standing orders. Following the clinical guidance and what is expected of you in the hospital. Also in the wards, you have areas where you have oxygen racks, which are movable in case of emergencies or patients who need um, 
oxygen you have a lot of sanities you can put above the patient's blood, um, bedside for time medication fluid charts hearing problems nail by mouth fluid restriction needs assistance while feeding risk of falls all of these things are supposed to be cues to actions for you when you are in the ward. You have the equipment hub where you have the weighing scale which you can sit on for patients who can't stand. You have a dynamic machine. You have your ECG machine. You have your manual blood pressure. You have your glucose bus for hypoglycemia treatment. You have your crash trolley. You have a defibrillator. You even have your suction machine. And you have a whole lot that you can find on there in the world. This will be shown to you so you know where to go for in case of trouble because when you start work, you're expected to do your work competently and nobody's going to be going around pushing you around. So you have to know where everything is. In the crash trolley, you have the box at the bottom that contains all the medications. Other rooms are labeled the sluice room, the clean room, the sluice, the dirty linen room, the clean linen room. And in some words, pictures are put of all the staffs who work in the world so people can easily identify them even with their pictures and their badges. We also have fire extinguishers and you are shown the exit route in case of a fire which we don't always want but can happen, God forbid. That is why we have our fire mandatory training just to prepare us in case of a fire to prevent death and harm to anybody. We also have drug trolleys in the ward, which we have attached the sharps box for any sharp objects or anything that looks, that looks like an ampoule or sharps object to prevent harm. And gradually, most trusts and also some care homes are rolling in electronic prescribing and electronic dispensing, whereas you need your computer to dispense medication and also gives you a prompt for when medications are due. This goes a long way to reduce drug errors and increases patient safety in drug administration. That's basically the layout of the ward. And once you've been taken around the ward and you see where everything is, you are ready to start your job for the day as I was ready to start up for the day. Usually it may take you a while to get used to these things, but trust me, you'll be happy when somebody takes you around the ward. It just helps you to get used to the environment, makes you comfortable and gives you opportunity to take it all in and take it all in remember to always ask questions where you're confused people will be always happy to help you it's better to ask questions than make mistakes because you could not ask the first question you'll be asked is did you ask anybody okay so that's a word layout basically in the hospital in care homes instead of rooms and wards you will have people in their different rooms and have their wardrobes their tvs in their room which is what you find in private wards in the hospital or in the base anyway but you have more serene atmosphere like the home in care homes when in a new ward always remember to do your documentation even in your normal ward or any other ward it is very important your documentation is what's going to speak for you even when you're not there to stand up for you that you have done a good job all through your shift okay so feel confident whenever you get into a new place and ensure you adapt quickly and as quickly as possible so i went ahead to do my job in this new world enjoyed myself and did my job to the best of my knowledge giving the highest quality and standard of care for the night and the morning it was time to go home i was happy i had given my best and I had done all that I could. To my returning subscribers, thank you for always coming back. Remember to be the best you can be and do your best at all times i love you all as always thank you for watching and i'll see you all in my next one thank you for your time bye bye for now